Hey guys, welcome back to another video of the home improvement variety. A couple months ago, I posted a video about a problem that we had with our generator that almost caused a fire. That's all been resolved, but in the process of digging into that, I decided to make an improvement, and that is adding a whole house surge protector to the electrical system. So this is a Siemens FS140. I'm very happy with how it came out electrically, Aesthetically, not so much, but in this video I'll explain why that is. This is not a how-to video, I'm not an electrician, but I'm just showing you what I did in my house and maybe that will give you some ideas. All right, here we go. Something I've been researching for a little bit is a whole house surge protector and it's time to do it. So I'm going with a Siemens FS140. I just opened up the wall. The FS is going to go through this newly drilled hole. Unfortunately, my panel is recessed with drywall around it and studs on each side of it, so anything where I'm doing mods requires a little extra effort. So this is what I had in mind. This will be raised up a little bit and leveled when I get the flush mount kit in. As far as why I chose this position, the instructions recommend getting this unit installed as close to the main breaker as possible. So it's going to be on this first breaker. Right now this is used for a heater in my garage which is very seldom used. It's a 2 pole 20 amp breaker and it supports having two wires per screw. So I have available space on this guy. So that was one thing that was very fortunate. The other is they want you to have a minimum amount of wire length from the first surge to the breaker and this is about as short as you can get about a foot if that so it really worked out well because my panel is full but I was able to put this down on that bottom right section with ease so the configuration that I came up with is to use two offsets with a coupler and this allows me to get a little further out from the wall. This could have been done with flexible conduit, one piece, uh, probably quite easily. But I actually do like the idea of the rigid mount because once this is attached to my load center, I'm going to want this to stay put. I know it's going to sag a little bit until I have the flush mount kit attached and screwed into the wall. But it is possible one day that this could get damaged and need to be replaced. And with this configuration, I think it's going to be very easy to just slide the whole thing out as a unit without having to open up the drywall again. At least that's how the flush mount kit is designed. Instead of going with the OEM kit from Siemens, which was over $100 in 2024, I went with a kit made by a company in Texas called Merica Metal. It was 30% less, and if you look around, you can find a 15% off code. I'm very happy with it. It's made of aluminum. Mm -hmm. It uses a different style of offsets, but at the end of the day, it does the job. Whichever flush mount kit you use, they're both designed so that you can slide them in a hole in the drywall, connect it to your panel, and there you go. And if you ever need to remove it, you just take out the four screws on the outside perimeter, disconnect it from inside your panel, and slide it out. The problem I had was that stud, and using a rigid conduit, there was just no way I could slide it in and out. So I had to connect it to plywood, and then insert the whole thing as one unit. I could have used drywall, but that would mean if I ever needed to take this out, I'd have to cut the drywall and go through all that. Instead, by using plywood, I can just take out a few screws, and pull it out. I just wired in the SPD. So the wiring comes through this conduit. The green yellow loops around onto the ground bar. The white is right there on the neutral bus bar, that 10 gauge. And then this bottom two pole breaker is going to be shared. So the two thicker wires are the hots for the SPD. So I kept bends to a minimum. There's a little bit of bend. I didn't want to cut the wiring too short, but I think that's a pretty darn good job. 
So time to close it up and let's give it a try. Okay, power's back on. Flip the breaker, boom. We got A and C with green lights. This still needs to be leveled and attached. And I've got some trim work to do. When I was planning this project, what I envisioned was having this nice and cleanly flush mounted on drywall. I had to adjust that plan because of the problems I ran into with the stud. And so it wasn't quite what I was expecting aesthetically, but it's a garage after all. It doesn't look horrible, so I'll just take it for what it is. The best part of it is my house is protected with a surge protector, which is something that I didn't have before. All in all, it's not a difficult project. I spent way more time on the structural carpentry part of it than I did on the actual electrical part. Fortunately, I had this available breaker right above where the main power came in, and it was easy to get to. My wiring leads are about 11 inches, which is great. I do like this unit. I would definitely recommend it. And if you want to try it, there's lots of other videos and reviews online. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.